It's going to be big for us, you know, not just tonight, but moving forward. Because he, he plays with a, a, you know, different different energy at a different pace. Uh, whether it's carving out second possessions, you know, just hitting bodies, uh, freeing up his teammates, and then his talk. You know, all those things combined, it, it, they are intimidating at times, and they're impactful because it's, it can change a game quickly. What did you think overall the defensive communication? Did you see what you wanted? And um, you mentioned this morning you wanted to see the adjustment the second effort and things like that. Right. How did you think the guys did? Overall, I mean, there's a lot to take from it. There's some good, there's some bad, a lot of teaching, but there were some good moments. And, you know, I think they were trying to do the right thing. And was it perfect all the time? No. But uh, overall, the effort was there. Uh, we were trying to be in the right spot. Um, and we tried to cover for each other, oftentimes overhelping, but your heart's in the right place. So we're not going to leave our, our teammates on an island. We're going to bring help. You know, in those situations, sometimes we just have to feel, you know, is it, is it too much or how much is necessary? Understanding that KCP wasn't maybe in a slot he might have been in, how was the ball movement among your first unit? Uh, to start, uh, you know, it was, it was a point of emphasis we had to make. It continued to keep that, that ball popping. Um, it got better as the game went. And I just think guys started to, to read it, you know, and they're switching a lot. I think that messed with us a little bit. But it's going to be something we have to deal with going forward because a lot of teams, are, you know, are going to downsize and play that way at times. Yeah, last one for me, but um, what do you think of Corey's start? It was good. I mean, I talked to him before the game, and, um, you know, he's, he's kind of been playing those – starters minutes in practice, you know, when, when uh, Pope left. So he's gotten a cool taste of it. He's been with that group for, for some reps. So it, it didn't feel uncomfortable. I thought he was, uh, he played with, you know, within himself, tried to do the right thing and had great looks. I mean, I think we, we all had great looks to start, um, just didn't knock him down. So we tried to form that chemistry. So after this first game, how do you evaluate that chemistry of that team? It's, it's a work in progress. You know, I know it's, we've had eight practices. It's the first preseason game. It's the first time we've really gotten after it against someone else. So it gives you a different look. Um, it's tough when you're guarding yourself and, you know, both sides know, know the calls. They know the play calls. So it just kind of junk it up a little bit. But when you're, you're playing another team, it's got a different feel. Uh, the pace of it, uh, the physicality of it. So, you know, when those things, you, know, you incorporate that with the pace and, and the speed, I think it can change, you know, some of the dynamics, make it harder to kind of get your communication to be on the same page. I think that's it for in person. So we'll now go to Zoom. We'll start with Chris. Thanks, Kira. Hey, Wes, I saw it. There was some times where you had Neto and Aaron out there together. Were you incorporating them like that during camp? And what do you like about that combination in the backcourt? Yeah, we tried that quite a bit. Um, you know, I talked about both guys and, you know, they're small in stature, but both of them are, are big in spirit, pure, big in uh, competitive competitiveness. And uh, to see them out there, they can play off each other. I think I can handle and initiate um, both of them as secondary uh, playmakers. So it uh, gives us some flexibility with that unit. Um, and defensively, they're going to get after it. So I don't, I don't really mind it. You know, at times, you know, teams are going to make tough shots over them, but they're going to be in the right spot. They're going to try and give themselves a chance to uh, defend the play. And Montrez just came in. Obviously, you can see the energy level, like, right away, just getting on the backboards. Besides him, is there other guys that kind of in camp that kind of just carried over what they were doing during camp? Yeah, uh, I thought AG, you know, uh, Aaron uh, was great. Um, Anthony was great. Um, Corey was good. You know, and I, not necessarily in the – those. Uh, game minutes because you look at the box score and say, well, it doesn't add up, it doesn't equate. But when you sit back and watch, they did a lot of good things. Um, I think that's carrying over that look and a half. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Chase. Um, hi, Wes. Uh, what, what did you think about the early chemistry you're seeing from uh, Spencer Denwitty and, and Daniel Gafford on pick and rolls? It's a tough dynamic. I mean, whether it's Brad or Spencer, um, both guys are dynamic downhill scorers. Um, they can shoot the three off the bounce. They can play make, get downhill, score at the rim. And, and Daniel's athleticism puts a lot of pressure on that defense. Um, if he sets screens, commits to hitting bodies, you've created a two-on-one. So now, you know, you've got that ball coming downhill. He's on the rim, opens up things behind that, you know, with the amount of shooting we can put on the floor. Uh, it, it could be a threat. And once again, we, we had great looks early. Um, 
I think 15 of our first 19, we would equate to paint threes, you know, where whether it's a roll, cut, um, you know, just a kick out, those type of things that generate tags. Um, those are open threes that we're looking to generate. And um, sorry if this was asked before Zoom opened, but just what did you think about how Spencer looked in his first game since uh, surgery? He looked terrific. Um, in all honesty, I know it's been a while since we've seen him in live action, uh, but I've been pleasantly surprised. Uh, no ill effects. He practices every day. He's in every live segment. So I give him a lot of credit. He, he looks ready. Um, his condition looks great. Um, so, you know, as far as I'm concerned, he, he's back to normal. But, you know, I know that's, you know, a judgment for the medical people. But they're done, to, to date, it doesn't seem to have uh, any ill effects on him at all. Neil? Coach, obviously, you know, fewer preseason games this season. You guys have, you know, three days before the next one. How do you see the next few days of practice going? Do you envision, you know, maybe another two a day? No, not at this point. And, you know, I think it's uh, important to take tonight, take a good look at uh, what we did, clean up some things. Um, you know, we still have to get up and down a bit, stay competitive, stay ready, but also build on tonight. Uh, what can we add? What can we learn from this? Um, defensively, there, there are a lot of things, obviously. And, and offensively, we're going to have to work uh, for switches, um, start putting in some of the other stuff that we've uh, talked about all summer. So, no, it's just, uh, I think it's more cerebral day, um, the day off tomorrow, cerebral day after that, and then we'll get uh, one competitive practice before we play you know, on Saturday. Coach said you've been kind of running with the first team of guys for a couple of days in camp. When did you start working with them, and what was that kind of getting into? What was that like for you? Yeah, Coach was right. A few days ago, I got started to get some reps with those guys, and um, you know, it's really easy to play with those guys. It's really easy to play with guys like that. Um, they know exactly where I'm going to be on the floor, and they have great uh, great, great vision of the floor and um, have really good balance between taking what the defense gives them and then finding me in the open opportunities. So um, really easy to kind of step in there and feel seamless to me. I know it's just preseason, but it's still your first NBA game. Did you get a chance to like take it in a little bit at all? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, I've played in big arenas and in big environments, you know, a lot, but this is different. Uh, it's different kind of having um, the NBA experience, getting my first NBA b b basket. So um Really, really happy with how today went, uh, just on a personal level. When you start, do your rookie duties change? At all? Like, are they like, okay, this time you actually okay? So no. <laughs> Absolutely not. No. Um, yeah, and I've also learned that the goalposts kind of shift as far as what a rookie means. So you know, first year versus got to play all eighty-two games. You got to play in a playoff game. Like, there's the guys have different definitions for that. So um, I'm just here to serve, and I'm here to do whatever they ask of me. So, and you know, to answer the question, no, it doesn't change. You played you played during the summer league. Uh, how different it is the summer league than the Yeah, it's much different. Much different. You know, we have you know we've had a bunch of practices under our belt with the same guys. Um, in summer league, we were, our lineups were shifting and people were moving in and out. So, a more cohesive group. Um, and you know, just you know, we did, we had Brad, we didn't have Brad Beal in summer league, so um, having him on the floor, you know, helps a lot. And then you played against um, Jalen Green. You know, you played in college for four years, and then they uh, played in the like a pro in the G League for one year. You know, both have an advantage. You know, do you think what is the difference? You know, playing in four years in college and the one year in G League professional. Yeah, I mean, going up against him, like he just he, he's so young and so like you know, he's he's so he's super talented, but he's talented, but he has a long ways still to go. Like all like we all do. Um, just developing. So, um, you know, it just goes to show you that there's a hundred different paths you can take to get to this spot. Um, you know, mine being a little bit more conventional and, um, you know, I wouldn't change my experience for the world and I'm pretty sure he wouldn't either. Corey, can you tell the difference in chemistry on court from the first day of training camp to now? I guess, how can you tell the difference? Like, what feels more natural to you out there with those guys? Yeah, I mean, guy, we're starting to figure it out. It's still not all the way there yet. You know, there's still plenty of um, chemistry, you know, still to be made. But, um, you know, guys aren't really cutting on top of each other. Our spacing's a lot better. Um, we're able to get into our plays a lot quicker. So I'm um, just those, that little stuff that, you know, an untrained eye really can't see. Um, but it's starting to come together and it's coming together fast. So I'm really happy with that.
We'll go to Zoom. We'll start with Chase. Um, hey, Corey, uh, just wanted to get your take on the your first, I guess, glimpse at NBA spacing. You talked about how the spacing would be different. Obviously, as a shooter, you could benefit from that. Yeah, um, it, it all is just based around, you know, um, trying to get as much space between each player as possible and make the defense, you know, play two on one. So whether that's on the roll or um, on the backside or, you know, it's all about finding those little advantages and, um, you know, those things didn't present themselves in college as much as they didn't do in the NBA. And that's where, you know, guys make their money. Chris. Hey, Corey, I got a kick out of pregame. Brad taking you up center court, meet the refs, the other players. Is that a part of rookie duties or is this getting you prepared for something we don't know about yet? Well, yeah, I heard a hey. And I kind of turned and did a double take and he was like pointing at me. He's like, come here. And so I was like, me? And so I walk up and I got to meet the refs. And that was what that was for. Um, kind of introduced myself and um, you know, those relationships with the referees are really important. And um, you know, I'm thankful for Brad that he kind of called me out and I was able to meet those guys and get a little bit of a leg up on the relationship we're, you know, we're going to form over the year. For a shooter like you, I'm curious, what's it like when you see it go through the net early in a game? What does that do for your confidence? Are you a guy that just, you know, as the game goes on, you know, it's going to go in the net eventually. Yeah, it's a little bit of both. When you see it go in early, you know, you're, you're hunting your shot more, guys are looking for you more. Um, that's just kind of the way it goes. But um, with all the reps and the hours that I've put in and a lot, a lot of guys who shoot it at, at, you know, at our, at our level um, know, like it just, it's no matter how high, like how good of a day you have or how bad of a day you have, you got to stay level and even keeled. So, um, you know, keeping a level head, shooting it when you're open and always hunting your shots. And, um, you know, we put the work, put enough work in to trust that it's going to fall, you know, sooner or later. Appreciate it. Thanks. Neil. Hey, Corey, uh, you know, obviously your first game, you know, just not even full minutes. Is there anything, though, that, you know, stuck out to you maybe about, oh, this is, you know, definitely something that's different than, you know, the college game or even just, you know, practice? Yeah, well, the first jump ball it was called, I was like pointing our direction, you know, instead of like the, the center, you know, they, they throw up at the free throw line. So, like, it's all just the little rules, uh, little rule changes from the NBA to college that I'm about to get used to. The, the playing itself is is fine, but um, the game like is just played a little bit differently and it's gonna take a little while for me to get used to. How did it feel that just the first minutes getting out there? Um, I mean, I, I guess could use the old cliche like riding a bike, you know what I mean? Um, I was just first preseason game, uh, it's a long season, gonna be ups and downs. So I'm not gonna declare myself an all-star, but um, it felt good, I felt comfortable. We have no adverse reaction right now, so. Uh, all signs are good. I think I was, I was pretty happy. Um, I asked Corey the same thing, but how, how can you see, or I guess, where do you see the development of your guys' chemistry from the start of training camp to now? You said you spent a lot of time wanting to learn the guys and their tendencies and yeah. everything like that. Where do you see that coming along on court? Oh, I mean, in all, in all facets, right? Um, I think, you know, connected with Gaff on a late lob today, uh, hit hit Kisper uh, on, a, on a single side tag for a three. Um, just knowing that, you know, he slides up a little bit higher than some people. Some people stay in the corner. So, you know, you're not necessarily looking for the deep corner pass all the time. Just little nuanced things like that. And it's going to continue to develop. We're, we're a new group in terms of who we have together. Um, I don't want to keep calling ourselves a young group, though, because the people that are on the floor aren't that young. Um, you know, so, so we should have a certain standard for ourselves. You know, uh, KCP Pope have rings. Trez has played a high low for a long time. Brad's an all-NBA type guy. You know, I'm 28. Um, you know, just looking down the line, I would say like our, our young guys that'll probably be in the rotation are, are Gaff, um, you know, Kispert and, um, and, and Aaron, right? So it's only three out of probably our nine that are really playing, at least right now. I mean, obviously Rui and, and, and Denny uh, kind of asterisk right now, but, you know, we, we should have a certain standard for ourselves. We, we have enough uh, uh, basketball IQ and veteranness out there. You mentioned Trez. What did his, I don't even know what you call it, like oomph, presence, whatever. What, what would you describe yeah. that as tonight? Oh, uh, Trez is a dog, man. He's a dog. He's going to bring it every night. Um, he's going to rip your heart out. And I think it's a certain certain presence and a certain mentality that that is uh, it permeates the group. So, you know, it's definitely good to have him out there. 
And um, last one for me, but what did you see from Aaron tonight when you were when you got to watch him? Uh, man, like I, I think in turn he's 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 got some of that trez in him. He's just real silent, well mannered, all that, but but he's not gonna take uh any uh expletive from anybody. <laughs> I'm just answering yourself. There you go. <laughs> it's been a long time since you, you know, rapture your issue. Um, how did you feel before this tonight's game? It's weird or you are nervous or um no, I mean I don't think I was nervous. Uh you know, it's it's basketball at the end of the day. Um and it's preseason. I might have nerves for the first official game, but at the same time I've also been playing basketball, so um I wasn't anxious about my knee. It was more so like a, a little bit of excitement um, and and an appreciation for being out here. You know, I haven't um, played a major role on a team in, since, what, March 2019, right, since uh, the shutdown. So uh, there was a certain level of, like, just being very, very grateful um, that more than anything. You had a very hard time you know, doing the rehabilitation, rehabilitation process. Mm -hmm. Did you remember, you know, think, think that day, you know, how hard it was? And finally, you came here, you come here. For sure, for sure. Um, uh, my, my son actually lives in San Antonio, and so this is not far uh, for him. So I got to spend a little bit of time with him over the last, let's call it 18 hours or, or so. And, um, you know, in that time frame, uh, you reflect, and probably because he's three, right? So you, you look at a young kid, and then I guess all of us kind of have some of those moments. Um, and so in that reflecting, I definitely thought about the rehab process, um, just how different he is from the, you know, eight months, it, you know, when it, when it started and, and, and to now. And uh, everything that's happened during that time has just been a lot. But again, like coming back to it, I just feel outrageously grateful. You know, I mean, I'm healthy. I'm playing. I'm with an organization, a team that wants me. I get it to play alongside a great player like Brad every every game in the backcourt. My son's healthy and probably the smartest person in this room if he was here. So, you know, I mean, it's it, it's looking up right now. I just hope that you know it continues. We will go to Zoom. We'll start with Chase. Hey, man, you mentioned the lob you threw to Gafford. Just what are your early impressions of playing with him and building chemistry with him? Oh, man, uh, the crazy part is, like, obviously, uh, I know the Jared Allen comparison is a little bit a little bit lazy just because they're the last two 6'11", uh, wiry, kind of young uh, centers that I played with. Um, he's a much more fluid athlete than Jared is. Um, Jared has some things that that he does uh, that, are, that are better than Gaff for sure, and that's my guy, so not – uh, knocking Jared at all, but um, just the way he's able to kind of move, it's 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 a little more guard like than uh, Jared was, and so um, it's going to be interesting. His fluidity as an athlete is is certainly special, and ability to block shots and play above the rim. Uh, if you look at him in wall up lines and layup lines, he's probably our best dunker, which usually doesn't happen from a center. So um, still a learning process, but man, he's a he's a phenomenal athlete. Chris. Uh, Spence, you were talking about, you know, having your son there. So I guess you didn't get the two naps in today. Oh, no, for so. Hey, listen. You definitely got the, you, you got the 90 minute one and then the 20 minute oh, yeah. one or. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I got both naps. Look, here's the thing. My family knows this, like. Not to sound like crass or crude or nothing. Right. But the, the, the job kind of has a lot of benefits for, you know, in the entire the entire situation so we, we no, we keep the main thing the main thing like i'm gonna get my naps i'm gonna follow my routine i'm gonna drink my green juices and all the other stuff that seems very boring and you don't like it but um so far it's 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 been good for for my people so you know i'm sorry son like go play with your mama and you know your grandparents and all the other stuff for the three hours and he, he was pouting because he wanted to play games and you know but it, it's good though I mean, I kind of, I kind of liked feeling missed. You know, when he was one and two, he didn't care about me at all. Now, at like three and change, like daddy's kind of cool now. So it's 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 all good right now. Uh, the, the rookie Kisford, uh, you know, Brad kind of messed with him before the game to send him to center circle to kind of meet the refs. 
right? Shake the opposing team's hand, all that other stuff. Is there anything because he was a four-year player, right? Like this kid played a lot of games in college, but he's still a rookie. Are there some things that kind of surprise you about him? Obviously getting into the starting lineup today was something he had worked on. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the practice before we left, we were in a scrimmage. He was an absolute flamethrower. And um, he also caught a tip dunk, I believe, in that practice too. So it showed you some of the sneaky athleticism. Um, sorry to even say sneaky because of the racial undertones of that. But uh, no, can really shoot smart head. He's going to get to space. I think that's really big for our team because obviously Brad's a prolific driver. So like we have to find ways to continue to create space. Um, you know, the rest of us, me included, you know what I'm saying? So uh, Kiss were already having some of that like ingrained in him um, makes him an easy fit to, to play with, uh, you know, the, the main unit. I know obviously this is the energy and the vocalness and everything that you bring is not something you're necessarily like trying to do. You just do it by now, but Wes said it has an ability to change games. Why with this group is that so important to start off with preseason game one? Um, Cause we're, uh, you know, a relatively new group, you know, from top to bottom, um, coaching staff, players, um, you know, the whole organization in general, um, really just trying to come in and just, uh, you know, establish that veteran leadership um, that's, you know, we need not lock on pretty much. Um, you know, we got a veteran guy and uh, like I tell people all the time, the guy that leads the charge our group is Brad DeBill. But I mean, Brad is one of those guys who kind of do, does it by example. You know, it's more so, um, you know, follow me, um, you know, follow what I'm doing. Um, it's not going to really voice it, you know, so I want to be that one on that backside for him to voice it, you know, because I'm not really scared of, you know, what nobody really has to say or, you know, how nobody feel. You know, we're all tying in, brought into, you know, one main goal, and that's uh, winning the basketball game and, uh, you know, stacking multiple wins together in order to make the playoffs and in order to, you know, make some noise in the playoffs. Um, do you mind when people are like signing up to you and asking you to take selfies when you're on the warm up part? Um, I mean, honestly, it's a little, it's a little annoying at times. I mean, I tell people, you know, if you don't take a selfie, you know, knock yourself out and it's your phone. But you know, don't look at me and ask me to, you know, do that or interact with you, you know, in that point of settings. Because you know, even though I'm out here just playing basketball to you, you know, this is my job. You know, so I'm locked in in the game plan. I'm locked in on the court. I'm um, cheering my teammates on and. You know, I'm rooting for them guys. You know, I'm not really um, consumed with, you know, taking a selfie with a fan on the sideline um, at that point in time. I mean, uh, it's a little bit different here because I was drafted here. Um, I played two years here. So um, the city still has love for me. The fans still have love for me. So it's a little bit different. Um, so I don't turn them either way. Um, I tell them, well, you know, do whatever you got to do. Um, if you want to meet me after the game and, you know, do a selfie, that's even better. But um, you know, I don't really pay too much attention or let it really bother me, really. Um, from what you saw of Gaffer tonight, just starting his first time starting for this team, um, at the start of the season, what do you think of him? Um, I mean, this young player is definitely, uh, you know, willing to learn, uh, hardworking. Um, but, I mean, in general, overall, us as a team, we got a lot of young guys who still have to, you know, get over that learning curve. Um, and we got to do it all together as a group, really. Um, like I, I, you're going to hear this message from me a lot, man. We have a, you know, completely new team, completely new staff, man. So, you know, I told people at the beginning in, in media day, um, starting out, man, we're going to have to do this together. It's not going to be on one person's shoulders. It's not going to be on just coaching staff shoulders. Like, we're going to all have to go through these, um, you know, growing pains together. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're all pulling in the right direction. You know, we can't help but get success, really. Given that starting point of the new roster and everything, where did you think the defensive communication was tonight overall? Um, we got a lot to learn. Um, the film is definitely uh, going to show us that. Um, I mean, honestly, you know, when you lose a game, it's a lot more um, to learn uh, when you win one. Um, you know, it's a lot of different things that we could say um, we could have did better. Um, a lot of different things we could have executed better. But, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, we had, you know, seven to eight practice in, in training camp. And then, you know, coming on, applying that to the floor with a, a relatively new team, a new group of guys. I mean, I think we did pretty solid for the first outing. I mean, honestly, it's just about continuing to keep building and keep stacking those days, um, keep stacking these games in order to go in the right direction. Um, you know, we got two or three more games, uh, dress rehearsals, and then the real one. So, you know, it's just time to get all the – little hiccups and, you know, the do's and the don'ts, you know, in now. And like I said, I can't 
for us for how we played tonight. We played a great game. Um, you know, the ball didn't bounce our way. They hit, you know, a hell of a lot of tough shots one on one, man. Even down to the end where we played our way through, man. It just made shots. It is what it is, man. But you know, like I said, there's a lot of things that we can learn and take away from this game, both good and bad. Start from Houston to Clippers and Lakers. This year with Wizards, do you feel, do you have a feel that you have responsibility to be a leader more than ever? No, nah, not really. I don't, I don't really, you know, look at it like I got to come in and set an example or anything like that. You know, I do it um, because, like I said, we got a lot of young guys in our locker room. Um, uh, two two rookies, um, a couple of guys who are, you know, not trying to get them, just trying to compete for a spot. I mean, the oldest guy on the team may be Brad, and he's only like 28. So that says a lot for our roster. It says a lot for our team. You know, it's fairly, very, relatively, uh, very, uh, relatively young. <laughs> you feel me? So I don't really try to come in and just, you know, take it upon myself saying I'm going to be a leader. Like I said, Brad is our leader. Um, I'm just more so the guy who's going to, do it on that vocal aspect for him um, because, you know, it's just how I'm wired, man. Um, you know, I put up a lot of energy. I'm constantly talking on the floor. Um, you know, some good, some bad at times, man. But it's just how I am, man. Um, so, really, like I said, I'm just going to be really that that backup voice um, for Brad, you know, in, in the times that we really need it because I, I think we got a lot of young guys on the team. But also, I think we got a lot of young guys who understand who Brad Bill is and, and what he brings to the floor, you know, how he work, his work, that, uh, his work ethic and, you know, how he goes about handling his business on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, I see a lot of guys, um, you know, even throughout this training camp process, you know, getting extra shots up, staying in late, you know, doing a lot of little things. So they, you know, seeing the example that he's putting out and following it. We'll go to Zoom. We'll start with Chase. Um, hey, man, as a, a veteran player who knows how to get ready for a regular season, what's your approach to the preseason and what do you try to get out of it individually? Um, honestly, man, I'm trying to, you know, just get back to playing basketball freely, man, just get back to enjoying the game and, you know, just being able to help my team, um, you know, on both ends of the floor. Um, you know, I didn't really get to be utilized how I wanted to be last year. Um, I damn near felt like I had, you know, a season off, so... I'm using this preseason to really ramp back up and really, you know, you know, knock off a lot of, you know, the rest on my own game, really. Um, and it starts tonight. Um, I think I was like two for eight from the field. Um, I rebound the ball pretty well. Uh, free throws fell for me. Um, you know, I'm on, I'm on my own, you know, worst critic, man. So, but I don't like how, um, you know, a couple of passes my teammates dropped off to me. I didn't finish for them. Uh, even the offensive rebounds that I got, I didn't finish. Um, and it caused it to just, you know, become more and more shot attempts where, you know, it's lost possessions. Um, and uh, it wouldn't be a problem if we won the game, you know, but we lost. You know, even in the preseason game, you want to win. Um, I'm a competitive person, and, you know, no matter what the setting is, no matter what the stage is, um, I want to win. So, um, you know, I just feel like, uh, you know, there's a couple of things that you know, I really want to get back on top of, really. So, honestly, I'm using this preseason to really just, um, you know, get myself prepared for um, a 2 game season with a brand new team um, and just – utilizing being the best in the role that they had me in, really. And just what was it like working with uh, Wes Unsell Jr., you know, his his first preseason game as an NBA head coach? Oh, it was great, man. Coach Wes is, is, is a good coach. He's a great coach, honestly. Uh, I want to say good. He's a great coach. Uh, you know, we're having the experience from your dad being in the game and, you know, a lot of different uh, things that he's going to teach and bring to the game. And then you come with your own aspect. Um, I mean, Coach Wes is great, man, like I said. But it's it's – it's not really, you know, more so just on him. We got to do it as a collective group, um, you know, from coaching staff to players to, you know, front office, man. Um, everybody in this organization is fairly new, man. So, like I said, it's going to be a lot of growing pains that we're going to have to get over um, and have to withstand. Uh, but as long as we're doing it together, I feel like, you know, we'll be going in the right direction, really. 